everybody and welcome to another edition of the Short Cup. So called because I'm wearing the shorts, not because I'm just under six foot. Uh, that little chef through there is Chef Whitey, who has taken up the usual position of barking at the live uh, pigeon in the garden, which one day maybe be uh, on the bench. Who knows? Um, so, uh, dedications today. We have, of course, the wonderful Clive doing the camera work. And also we have uh, Stuart Marston, who's one of our two ball rallyists. And it's his birthday today. Please subscribe, Stuart. And everybody else, please subscribe as well. Shall we sing happy birthday to Stuart? All right, let's do that. Yeah. <clears throat> Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stuart. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stuart. Happy birthday to you. That's one up for you uh, with Tyson, isn't it, Stu? That's two uh, Marston birthdays we've had. None in the Tyson household. All right, <clears throat> so ingredients wise, we're gonna knock this out in a couple of uh, goes today. Um, what we're gonna do first of all is, uh, did I mention what we're doing? No. Uh, this is called a uh, turkey schnitzelish. It's kind of a, a take on uh, uh, a classic Austrian dish, I think it is. Wiener schnitzel, which is veal battered out. We're gonna take some turkey steaks, we're gonna batter them out. And then, down Clive, here we go. There's the turkey steaks. Uh, we're gonna dip them into, or we're gonna put, uh, so I'm going to dust them in the, the seasoned flour here, that's just flour with salt and pepper. We are going to dip them in the egg mix, that's just some eggs that I've whisked up and put on the plate. And then we're going to put them into uh, that breadcrumb mix there. And then in the second part today, we're going to fry them um, in a frying pan with some rapeseed oil and some butter, but we'll come back to that later. Right, okay, so what we do is we get a turkey steak, we put it on the board, and we get the cling film and we put it over and we get the meat hammer. If you haven't got a meat hammer, I'll just show you what else you could use. <coughs> you could just use the back of your knife, just like that. And it'll just bash it out, absolutely no problem. It'll take you a little bit while, uh, a little while longer, but you can just do that. Or you could get a hammer out of your workshop and you could put some cling film over that. And you could use that as well. All right, so that's that done. Then what you do is, you pick it up, see it's flattened out yet? We'll put it into the seasoned flour. Make sure it's got a decent covering. Knock off the excess into the egg mix. Again, off with the excess. Into the breadcrumbs, cover both sides of the breadcrumbs. Let's turn it over. There we are. And I think what we'll do is we'll do a double dip. All right, you ready? Back into the egg. Off with the excess. Back into the prum crumbs. Crumbs all over. And then what we're gonna do with that is, just get on the other plate I'm over here. And I'm gonna put that onto our plate. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set these up in the oven. Uh, not in the oven, I keep, I'm insistent on setting things up in the oven. We're going to put them in the fridge to sort of stabilise and set up. And then what we'll do is in the second part is we will come back and we're going to fry them in a little oil and butter. Uh, should I do one more? Should maybe do one more, eh? So another steak. On we go. Cling film over. Meat hammer. On the back of a knife. Just like that. off into the seasoned flour, shake off any excess, into the egg mix, <clears throat> which of course provides the medium for the breadcrumbs to stick, into the breadcrumbs, double dip, into the breadcrumbs again, Make sure you get a decent coat in, shake off any excess and onto the plate to go in the fridge. All right, I'm going to do the other turkey steaks 
and then we'll set those up and then we'll be back in I don't know half an hour or something like that see you and welcome back Clive shot on the schnitzels please there we go they've just come out of the fridge what we have here in my hand is some fine and dandy we haven't started have we yeah. haven't started have we yeah. Started? yeah some fine and dandy rapeseed oil all right so we'll put this on here that pan's been on for a couple of minutes so you can see that oil is immediately hot and then we will almost immediately get the schnitzels into the pan like so all right nice sizzle on that should i just add that in the pan at the back there we have some cabbage some cauliflower and some peas which have been handled by auntie sandra because she is in charge of the cabbage, peas, and cauliflower department of the short cook. And just to add a little richness, and also to brown the breadcrumbs, we're going to put a little piece of butter in there as well. That'll just melt down. This will not be a long process. <clears throat> what we are saying is, apparently, is that... Uh, as soon as this cabbage, peas and cauliflower is cooked, and I've been given a time of precisely wait, one minute, this will also be ready and we will serve it all up onto a fantastic restaurant plate. Just have a quick slurp, Clive. <coughs> Slightly dry today. we doing today we seem to have lost ah here it is lost my oven cloth here we go so we have made some croquettes that's uh, cheese and lake croquettes now what we might do is we might have a lesson on croquettes um, another day I think so let's have a look how good is oh how good does that look hey how good does that look? We are literally minutes away from finishing now. Remember, because we battered the turkey out so thin, that it actually doesn't take that long to cook. Is this on max? Yeah, it should be on maximum. Right, and what we'll do is we'll now check to see how we're doing with the old cabbage. Let's have a look at that. So, check the peas, see how they're doing. Not bad. Good cabbage. Yep, that's alright as well. Uh, cauliflower's a bit rock hard, so we'll leave that again for another couple of minutes. We have also got some fine distinguished gravy that we made the other day for the chicken dinner that we had on our day off. That Clive, I'm just going to make sure that this is... Oh, that might be the best gravy ever. That chicken that we had the other day was absolutely incredible. Herb fed organic chicken and it was just the best chicken that I've ever tasted. Right, I think that the chicken salad at the back there that I put on first might well be ready. So what we're going to do is we are going to check it. So we're going to take it out like so and we're going to put it on the board and we are going to run the knife through it and we're going to see if it's cooked all the way through. Just like that. So, if we pick that up, Clive, let's have a look. You can see that that is just about cooked. And that is what we want. The last thing we want is the turkey to be dry and stringy. There's not very much of it there to cook. And that was a very hot pan. So, uh, we've checked that one. We'll leave that one there. 
Um, I should think I should probably test this one as well. Do you think I should test this one? Yeah. Ah, uh, it's off. That's terrible crap. I don't think that you will be able to eat one of those for your tea. I think that probably I'll have to have two. Uh, I, I, I won't want to have two, obviously, because it is, as I say, it is terrible. But, um, you know, I wouldn't want to put you through that. So. Let's just flip this one over, yep, that's looking good. This isn't cooked on this edge here though, so we're not going to get away with that. That one is looking pretty good. And that one is looking pretty good as well. I think that one's ready. And it's being told me it is. So what we're going to do is, we are going to take it that those are cooked now. We're going to turn that off. I'm actually just going to put a little bit of there, right? Just going to hang fire over there. Hang your horses. Now we're just going to season those vegetables. Just with a little bit of butter. Like that. Not in there, not in there, just like that. And also, make a little bit of protein there. I'm just going to put a bit of salt on there as well. Just like that. Alright, I think we can serve up that. So I'm going to leave that one on the back there. I'm just going to flip that again. Into that side and into the middle. I'm going to take that one off. I'm just going to put it on the board. Take that one off. I'm just going to put that on the board as well. Just rest those for a minute or two. Pop that in, it in the middle there, just like that. We'll get ourselves a plate. And then we'll get some croquettes. And get ourselves a schnitzel. Nice schnitzel. What's, what's that side look like? Yes. Alright, just on there like that. Get ourselves a bit of veg. We've got some cabbage there. And we've got some cauliflower there. Now if I get a spoon, we get a nice spoon of peas out onto there as well. There we are. Yep. We will just Pour a bit of gravy over that. And to Sandra, would you like gravy over everywhere? Oh, she's coming at the door. She says no. Where would you like gravy? Oh, you're going to do it. Oh, good. Well, we won't finish the dish then. Oh, well, that's all right. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll just end there because uh, Sandra doesn't want me to put the gravy on. So, oh, hang on. Wait. Where? Honestly, we're going to start making a list of things. That first of all, she will eat, and secondly, the way that we can put things on the plate. Because apparently, there's things like you can't put cheese next to beans and things like that. And if you put an egg on a plate next to a sausage, well, they've got to be separated by toast. So I don't know how this works. So what we'll do is we'll make this one look fairly nice anyway, and then if Auntie Sandra won't eat it, you turn that one off. We'll give it to Clive. So there we are. Let's put a little bit of sauce on there, which is quite simply just gravy around the edge. Looks a bit rustic. We're going to put a bit of parsley on, just like that. That is not the best looking plate of food that we've ever done, Clive. But it was very enjoyable and I absolutely guarantee you that it was going to taste wonderfully marvellous. So, that is a short out from Short Cook. Uh, cooking almost live. Um, please subscribe, stay safe, enjoy yourselves, and we'll see you again. Thank you.